In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of tools, including um, spot healing brush tool and how to sharpen your images. This right here is just a regular JPEG image. I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to save this as a PSD. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to call it Favorite Edited. Now, in this particular uh, in this particular image right here, we've got a couple of different problems going on. We've got um, some blurriness, unfortunately. So as you zoom in here, you'll notice that the image itself is rather blurry. Um, it's also blue, which we dealt with in the last video, talking about levels and things. Um, so we'll be reviewing that briefly. And then we've also just got some stuff on her face. Uh, you can see the, the remains of lunch right over here. A little something going on right there, a little spot on her chin that uh, probably would be nice just to be able to get rid of. So what we're going to do first is we're going to sharpen up this entire image. Uh, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to right click on my background layer and duplicate this layer. The reason why I'm going to do this, this is just sort of a habit that I have, but if I change something on this layer I can always duplicate another uh, copy of it from the background layer. But if I do everything on my original background layer and close it and save it, there's no way that I can really control Z when I open it up again. So <clears throat> I'm just going to create a, uh, a copy of this layer and we'll work with it. Okay, so again here I'm using my spacebar to get my hand tool and then move, uh, clicking and dragging to move around on the image. I can also use control minus or control plus to zoom in or zoom out and in. Now to sharpen this image, I'm going to use a tool called Unsharp Mask. It's actually not a tool, it's a filter. Photoshop has a lot of filters. If you're really adventurous someday, go through uh, all of these uh, filters here and just have fun with them. There's a lot of really cool filters. But we're going to use Sharpen. Now, <clears throat> Sharpen is kind of, uh, the reason why I'm doing Sharpen is, uh, first, that you use it a lot, but second, it's a little less uh, intuitive which one you should be using. Um, I'm actually going to use Unsharp Mask. Sharpen itself, if you click on Sharpen, doesn't really do much. I'm not sure if you noticed that. I'm going to hit Control-Z. Yeah, it doesn't really do much. So I'm going to use Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp, Mask. This is the one that I'm most used to. And uh, for this exercise, I'm going to, you'll see my cursor turns into a black square. And when I click on this image, it shows me the part of the image uh, that I click on, and it allows me to sort of get a better view of it. Now, uh, in this Unsharp, Mask dialog box, um, if you hover over the amount or radius or threshold, your cursor turns into a a finger with a left and right arrow, you can click there and move it up and down, or you can actually click on the slider here. What this does is it's really sort of three pieces here, and I, uh, I'm not going to give you a super technical dissertation on what these do, but here's a basic idea. Radius determines how many pixels it deals with at once. So if I increase the number of you know pixels, astronomically, it has a tendency to block your colors together, or lump colors together, so you get a lot of this sort of color blocking sort of idea. Um, when you're selecting a radius, it's kind of just by feel, um, so what I do is I like to step it up just a little bit until it starts to sort of feel like it's sharpened without turning too cartoony. Then you deal with the amount, and the amount actually uh, once you've dialed in your radius, your amount then is the thing that actually does the sharpening, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play around with this and just sort of see if I can tease out a little bit more sharpness than I had before. Uh, now threshold, I'm not going to lie, I don't know what threshold does. Um, as far as I can see, it kind of adds a little bit more realism into it, if that makes sense. So uh, it it sort of is your happy medium level. I'm not sure on that one. I usually deal with the first two and sort of play around the threshold. But that's the basic idea. I'm going to click OK here. 
And if I want to see my original, I poke out the eyeball, I turn off the visibility on this upper layer, and this is what I had before. This is what I now have. So there's quite a bit of difference, actually. If I zoom out, <coughs> it actually is quite striking how much of a difference that makes, especially in the eyes. Um, I'm going to add my equip. Uh, no, actually, I'll leave that for the very last. Um, then what I'm going to do is use what's called the Spot Healing Brush tool. I'm going to hit Control Plus and zoom in just a smidge. Now, the Spot Healing Brush tool is quite frankly amazing. It's found over here in your tools pa uh, panel and it looks like a band-aid with a little circle behind it. If you don't see it there, click and hold on any one of these tools here and you might see one of these instead. In fact, each one of these tools that has an arrow in the bottom right hand corner means that if you click and hold on it, it actually has more tools underneath it. So I'm going to click on my spot healing brush tool and all you do for the Spot Healing Brush tool is you click and drag over an area that you want to quote unquote fix. Uh, it's magical. Let me show you. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Let me show you that again. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. Again, I just click and drag over the top and look at that. This is actually using an algorithm called Content Aware Filling. And if you look up in your options panel in the top, you'll notice that content aware is checked. There are two other ways that you can do this, create texture and proximity match. Proximity match is the old school way. Content aware is the new school way. So I generally stick with content aware. So I'm going to click on this little bit of food there. I'm going to click and drag on this little bit of food there. A little bit more, sort of clean up. Um, Something to be aware of as you're doing content aware um, fill or you know the spot healing brush tool is you know don't make people look fake I guess you could say but there is quite a bit that you can do to uh, to clean things up now if you want to make your brush smaller or bigger the keyboard shortcut is the square brackets found on your keyboard uh, if you find the plus and the minus it's just adjacent to those two so the square brackets. The right one increases the size of your brush, just like that. The left one decreases it. But just for kicks, if I have a really big brush and I click on her nose, I wonder what it'll do actually. I've never seen, I've never tried it on the nose. <coughs> Look at that. It tried its best to get rid of the nose. That's kind of freaky. I'm going to hit Control Z and get, go back to where we were before. Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea of how the Spot Healing Brush tool works. It works best when you've got specific blemishes or things you're trying to get rid of hit control to that. Um, within an area that uh, is relatively uniform. But even here, even down here in a more complicated area, if I wanted to get rid of this button, for instance, uh, make my brush bigger using the square brackets and click. I've never done it before on this one, but I'm guessing it'll do a pretty good job. Not bad. Not bad, in fact. If I uh, sort of drag around the edge, just sort of do a second le level cleanup, it gets rid of the button. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Now I'm going to hit Control Z and hit Control Z again, and you'll notice a problem. As you hit Control Z, it just toggles back and forth. Well, this is because Photoshop considers Control Z to, well, it defines Control Z in its strictest sense possible, meaning that it is an undo of the last action. So if you hit undo and then undo again, it's going to undo the undo. It's kind of an Inception style undo, uh, where you're undoing the undoing, I guess. Um, but there is a way to get around this. There is more than just one undo. There's two things that I can show you. The first is coming up here to edit. You'll notice that there is a step backwards. We've got Control Z here at the top, but a step backwards is Alt Control Z, and that in fact will move you backwards. So Alt Control Z, Alt Control Z, etc. Um, I'm going to actually step forward because I think that I did a blemish up here last. The second way of doing this is actually found over here to the right, and it's called your History Panel. The History Panel is really nifty because it keeps track of everything that you've done. Well, actually, I believe there's a setting that determines how many steps it keeps track of. And I last I checked, it was 40. I'm not sure. 
But at any time, if you open up the history panel here, you can always go back for, or far, farther in time. So what did it look like without the unsharp mask? And then if I go to the spot healing brush tool, hey, look at that. It got rid of the button. So I'm going to step back one, one step right there to give, bring the button back. Now, a word of caution on this. You remember the movie Back to the Future? How Marty McFly went back in time and then did something different and almost erased his future? Well, Photoshop is like Back to the Future but with a sad ending. If you step all the way back here and then do something, it will erase the possible future that it used to have, if that makes sense. So you can't fork and have multiple futures here. You only can have one. So beware that if you step back in time and then do an action, it will get rid of all of the future actions on that timeline. It's a really deep concept, and I'm sure that there's philosophy papers written all about this. I'm going to close my uh, history panel. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is adjust the colors just a bit. I'm going to hit Control uh, 0 to make it as full screen as it'll go on my computer. And I'm going to click Levels. Now again, if you haven't watched the other video where we talk about levels, um, just a brief recap. I'm going to flip through the histograms here and I'm going to adjust the sliders to hug the edges of the histogram itself. Go through blue here. Uh, not for that now. Alright, um, then I'm going to add a brightness and contrast layer as well. I'm going to tone down the brightness just a little bit. And then I'm going to add a vibrance layer as well, just to sort of make her look a little pinker, I guess you could say. I'm going to go back into my levels. And I'm going to flip into the red here, and I'm going to increase that just a little more. Ah, there we go. Now we're starting to cook. Alright, so again, I'm going to actually click and drag and poke all these eyeballs out at the same time. That's where we're coming from, and this is where we go with, uh, with the ability to correct, with, correct uh, using the spot healing brush tool to get rid of these blemishes on her face, as well as um, sharpening using unsharp mask, and then this series of adjustment layers to sort of make the colors pop. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of cropping here. I mean, I've got an 8 by 10 aspect layer or aspect ratio going on up here. And so I'm going to crop this right here using the rule of thirds. I'm going to line her nose up right on that line. And then I'm going to click the accept button. And now we've got a very, very cute, much improved, again, this is where we're coming from, this is where we are, much improved version of this picture.